Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams with our Wednesday Word for November the 14th. Our theme for the year is Fear, False Evidence Appearing Real. And we're continuing our lessons in Nehemiah. And so today our lesson is Nehemiah on the Wall, Ask and Receive. Our scripture theme for the year is found in Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So today we're going to start in Nehemiah 2, reading verse 1 through 10. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Now we ask that you would open up your word to us, that we may see it, understand it, and that we may apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it begins. In the month of Nehemiah, in the 20th year of King Xerxes, where wine was brought to him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had been set, I had not been sad in his presence before, so the king asked me, Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to, the, to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I asked the king, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also asked him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asap, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because of the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. So I went to the governor of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letter. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite officials heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. And so last week we read that Nehemiah, he had went before the Lord and asked God to give him favor and it ended with him asking that God would give him favor before the king. Now if just a little bit of note of background one of the commentary just mentioned that nearly four months passes from the time of you know chapter one to this month and so they said this is kind of like from November to March uh, in terms of looking at the months but so four months have passed and now we see him going before uh, the king. And so the first point I want to bring is when fear rises, don't let it keep you from seeking from the king what you want. And so here in verse two, we see that Nehemiah goes in and even though it says that he had never been sad before in the presence of the king. So this was something different. This is something he had never done before. It was, you know, it has been said and I can't, you know, quote exactly, but I've read and it's been said that, you know, this was really considered no, that you as a servant did not even come and show any sadness or anything before the king. So for him to do such a thing, it was being risky. And so he had to have a little bit of fear. And if we know that because he says that when the king asked him, he said, I was very much afraid. But even though he was afraid, he did not allow it to hinder him from doing and asking for what he wanted. And that's a reminder for you and I today that we can't let our fear stand in the way. I've heard it said and I've heard it preached a few times that even if you have to do it afraid, do it anyway. And so that's exactly what Nehemiah does. And I want to, that brings us to our next point, which is when you pray, God will prepare um, an intervention in and, and will intervene in your situation. Let me say that again. When you pray, God will will prepare you and intervene in your situations. And we see that in verse four and five, because he, because Nehemiah wasn't afraid and he willingly stepped out and asked the, in this sense, he asked the natural King what he wanted. Uh, 
I mean, the natural king asked him what did he wanted. And so we see that little piece of scripture at the end of verse four, where it says, then I prayed to the God of heaven. So Nehemiah, every step of the way, he was asking for God to intervene with him on behalf of his situation. And so he asked this natural king that if he would allow him to go and if he would allow him to, to intervene on behalf of what his, the people and the needs of the Israelites. And I just want to pause for just a moment here. And even though this is Nehemiah going before a natural king and asking him, you know, there are kings in our life. There are people that are authority in our life. Sometimes we might have to go to the boss or maybe you have to go to your teachers or maybe you have to go to somebody that's in authority over you. But this is just a reassurance that if you keep God in the process along the way, that God will give you favor and he will then work on the hearts of the king. Because this was a natural king. And yet we see God works on his heart in such a way that he was concerned about Nehemiah's concerns. And so God will, will allow people's hearts to be turned to be favorable to your concerns. And this takes me to the next point. It says, don't let fear keep you from asking for what you want. And, and so in verse six through eight, we see that Nehemiah, he specifically says what he wants to do. Cause the king asked, well, what do you want? How long will you be gone? And so he gives them the detail. But not only that, he asked for even more. He asked for a letter. So so here we see Nehemiah thinking about what he wanted. So who knows? Maybe in that four, four months of time, because we don't see it and we don't have the answer, but maybe during that four months of time, God was preparing him to even know what he asked for. And so sometimes we ask for things in prayer. We want God to do it right now, right this moment. But sometimes God needs to prepare us so we even know what to ask and how to ask for it. And so he does. He asks for what he needs. And then the next point is God will give you more than what you ask for. And so we see that in these verses 9 through 10, that the king not only grants him the letters, but we see in verse 9, it says that the king also sent army uh, officers and a cavalry with him. So he sent protection. And that's just a reminder for you and I, when we really see God in our situations, that not only will he give us the answer, but his armor, his army, his, his angels, his protection goes with us when we step out to do those things of God. And so remember these Nehemiah, I want to, I want to bring another point here is that Nehemiah he was already in a comfortable place. He was in the kingdom. He was working for the king. We don't see that he was being abused. We don't see anything necessarily going wrong. He was in no hurry to be let go. But he saw the plight of his people. And when he saw the plight of his people, he did two things. He went into prayer, but he went into action. Oftentimes, we might do one or the other. And most of the time we don't want, we'll pray, but we don't want to have to necessarily be part of the answer to the prayer. And Nehemiah was ready to not only pray and ask for God to help, but he was ready to be part of the answer. And so what is our life lesson? Our life lesson is don't let fear hinder you from asking and receiving the abundance of favor God has for your situation. Nehemiah was willing to step out and ask. He was willing not to let his fear get in the way. And because of that, he was able to ask for what he wanted from God. He asked with the right motives. We saw last week that he asked with, with the right prayer. His prayer life was in a right kind of order. So he asked with the right expectation. And in doing so, he was able to hear from God. And I read something else in one of the commentaries. I just want to bring this here. Even though we don't have the history of Nehemiah in one of history books, uh, the Maccabees, it, it is stated that a possibility that Nehemiah was a priest. So so here was a man that had a, a propensity towards doing the things of God. He had a love for God in his heart. And so we see that in evident in his prayer life. We see this evidence that he was not willing to see what was in need and not get involved. And so our answers and, and so the life lessons we need to have is that God has our what we need for our situations. Are we going to ask him? And then when he gives us the answers, are we going to act on them? So we will go and we will continue next week as we will go into the latter part of Nehemiah 2. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, to learn how to ask and receive and believe it and then be part of the process. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.